All right, we're recording. So slow principle form and point slow form. Remember, I already talked about that. Uh, Um, so slope intercept form is y equals mx plus v. We should know this. Point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, if you look at example one, I mean, find the slope. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Take the difference in the y values, difference in the x values. 2 minus negative 4 or 5 minus negative 4. Easy. And if you want to write that in point slope form, use 2 thirds of your slope and use either 5, 2 or negative 4, negative 4, your choice for x1, y1. So you can write it a couple of ways. It could be y minus two equals two thirds x minus five, as you see in print there. Or it could be y plus four. If you do y minus negative four, it's y plus four equals two thirds x plus four. Same thing. Reason why is that when you rewrite it in a slope intercept form, you'll get the same result either way. So if you did it this way, right here, or if you did it this way, y minus negative four equals two thirds x minus negative 4. Either way, if you um, rearrange this, you'll wind up with this, and you get the same y-intercept. Slope will be still 2 thirds. Uh, for D in standard form is when you actually put x, y on the same side. Um, they don't really ask that question. The ST was just good to know what standard form looks like. And typically, uh, we like to avoid fractions if we could. You know, just another way of expressing the equation. Just you know, if you multiply both sides by three, it's totally fair treatment. And then move, you know, all variables one side. Find the x-intercepts when you plug in zero for y, solve for x. Um, you could have done it whether it's standard form, slope intercept form, or point slope form. You're just plugging zero, uh, uh, zero for y and solving for x. So uh, looks like there are five questions here. Um, I'll do... Um, four and five with you guys, and then one, two, three, which I'll deal with um, this graph here. I'll just let you guys do it in your breakout rooms. So for number four, uh, they say in 2005, 120 students at least in high school had a smartphone. Five years later, in 2010, 345 students now had an iPhone or smartphone, could be droid, right? Uh, which of fun best describes annual rate of change? Remember, rate of change is slope. You see where rate of change, annual, average, whatever, it's a slope. Um, and you're doing it for those for that five year period. So basically what you're doing is you could think of it as these coordinates, 2005 comma 120 is your first point, 2010 comma 345 is your other point. So you just subtract the Y's. So what you do is you're deliberately converting the information as problem to X and Y coordinates, something that you guys are very comfortable familiar with you just have to just uh, realize that's all you're doing. And it's pretty straightforward at that point. Once you um, kind of draw that, make that connection there. So that's a 120, by the way, messy handwriting, sorry about that. So that's 225 over five. Oh, yikes. 225 over five, which is 45. So it's increased by 45 per year. That's all. Um, for five, um, they want you to write the equation line that passes through that. So these are all in standard form. So I'll first do this, y equals, or I could probably do this, y minus negative one equals negative two, x minus four. So I start at point slope form, y plus one equals negative two x plus eight, two x plus y on this side, seven on the other side. There we go. So I move all the variables one side, all the constants the other side, combine like terms if you could, clean it up. Um, so those are, I think, are gimmies. Um, number four, not a hard one, might be close to the middle. Five, I think, would be pretty straightforward. You can see them, though, and those are free points. You really don't want to miss those. So you have a chance to practice the same skills for one, two, and three over here. Uh, any questions before I clear the screen? Nope? Okay. Clear. And then for three, four parallel and perpendicular lines, remember parallel lines don't touch, they have the same slope. Um, all um, vertical lines are parallel, we know this. Um, horizontal lines are also parallel. 
Sorry, I just noticed a, a mouse in our backyard by the rose bushes. Sorry, <laughs> just letting my wife know that. <laughs> I'm staring at the back, you're like, so I might have to get a rat trap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, and I got this on recording. That's awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so perpendicular lines are when two lines are um, crossing at a right angle, 90 degrees. We know this. Uh, remember, parallel lines, again, have the same slope. So I was a little distracted by the, the mouse in the backyard. <laughs> and uh, perpendicular lines are when you have a negative reciprocal slopes. So for example, um, if that slope's one half, then that slope is, of course, negative two. Um, so write the equation line that passes a point one comma two that are parallel and perpendicular. So it would help to actually write this in um, slope intercept form. So you just kind of move things around a little bit, pretty easy to do. Uh, the slope is three. So parallel lines um, obviously will have the same slope, so you just use the same slope there, and you're using one comma two as your coordinates. That's written in point slope form. Perpendicular, you're gonna do negative one third, obviously. Still use one comma two, because we're passing that point. So there you go. Um, so again, if you're asked to write something that's parallel to a particular line, and the line's going to you in standard form, rewrite it in slope intercept form, get the slope. Um, and then use the point that you're supposed to pass through, and you can use point slope form in that um, in that sense. So um, I'll do probably four and six, let's say. Yeah, I'll do four and six, and I'll have you guys do one, two, three, five in your breakout rooms. So for four. Um, so we have a line past those two points and it's parallel to the, this graph. It's negative two y equals negative four x plus 13. So y equals two x minus 13 halves. So you can divide both sides by negative two. Um, so since you wanna be parallel, you want the same slope. And then I just set up the slope formula, b minus two, over five minus negative one equals two. So B minus two over six equals two. B minus two equals 12. B is 14. But you really need to make sure that you're um, Isolating y in the equation so you can get the slope and in parallel of course use the same slope and then use the coordinates You know change y or change in x to solve for the unknown coordinate Which is the y coordinate of the second point there or they labeled as b, right? So b is 14 for that one Six um, they want the value of a so we'll need to find the slope of the of line t which is again, change y or change in x, one minus negative three over two minus negative four. So positive, 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 four six or two thirds. But guess what? The slope of L is flipped, negative three over two. So you do four minus negative two over negative one minus a. Um, <clears throat> so you set them equal to each other. Um, you or you keep. I mean, we did obviously, but you just keep going here to get twelve equals three. Come on. 3 plus 3a, three because you do negative 3 times negative 1 times negative a. 3a equals 9, a equals 3. So 
So again, it just takes some work, but it's not hard conceptually. You guys know slope. You guys know parallel lines have same slope, perfect lines have negative reciprocal slopes. We know this. Um, so yeah, and just do some algebra at that point. So um, I'll have you guys do one, two, three of three, three. So we did four and five together. So this should go by pretty quick. And then we'll do one, two, three, five. Five is gonna be pretty similar to both four and six. Um, one, two, three should be, I think, pretty straightforward as well. Um, so that's a total of seven problems. I think eight minutes should be sufficient. And then we'll do the last two sections. So stop sharing, stop.